What is up all my YouTube wanderers? Welcome back to the Derm channel and welcome to an explanation video. I know, relax. This is just a quick video. Right after this uploaded will be the thing that's connected to. This is explaining how Derm would. I know I probably don't need to do this. I just feel like you guys would probably appreciate if I did this. So, how Dermwood is going to be a series I'm going to be creating monthly. It's going to be once a month, and it's all brain topics. These are things, fun thought experiments to go through. So if you see a, a title about something and you're like, that could never actually happen, it's just fun to think, well, what if it could, and what if I was planning it? And I'm just going to go through how I would do it. And I would love if you guys, you know, stop and think, hey, I kind of like how he did this. Uh, let's change those couple things. I don't agree with those. I do with those. It's just fun thought experiments. So every month I'll be uploading these videos. These are going to be more just me sitting here talking like this. You just get one on one with me. Uh, a little bit more editing is going to have to go into it because I have probably put some pictures up. Probably a little bit of background music because just listening to me talk is going to get ungodly uh, annoying and piss people off. But whatever. So yeah, it's going to happen monthly. I have a lot of, uh, I have currently seven already planned. I'm going to write like mini scripts. So if you see me paying attention to the screen, I'm probably just looking, making sure I'm not forgetting what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah. So this is literally just, actually, no, it's not a full video. This is literally just going before the first How Dermwood video. So yeah, let's get into that. Hello and welcome to How Dermwood, the monthly show where I tell you how I would do things. Today, how Derm would create an NFL expansion. Whoa, hold up. I know I have just jumped right off the deep end with the first one. I get it. This is a wild thing to say. Creating an NFL expansion. What does that mean? So I'm going all out here. I'm going wild. I am throwing it all out there, as people would say. And saying, I am creating a system where, or it's not system, I'm creating a league where you take all the 32 teams we have now and you add eight, which I know is a lot. And you'd have to find eight people to own the teams. Head coaches would become very scarce. You see all these talks today as the NFL season recently ended about Jim Harbaugh coming back and getting a team, Sean Payton coming back. Now you get these smaller coaches, these not as good coaches, and they get brand new franchises. There will be an expansion draft. There will be all this. We'll talk about that in a minute. First off, let's start this by talking about our teams. I have created eight teams, come up with their color schemes. I went on the internet and found just a little fun thing to create just a basic looking, well, basic uh, uniform for each team. So I will be showing you all those. So here to start, we go to Fargo, North Dakota for the Woodsmen. Their colors are brown, white, red. They have this really nice uniform here that I like. I, I'm definitely trying to fill the middle of the map out. And you'll see the map later. With the Woodsmen, I feel like it's a very fun type of thing. The brown, red, and white. You kind of get like this very fun, dark aesthetic to it with like the red accents. Which I think is something not a lot of, a lot of the teams around the world use. And I also have tried to come up with, let's just not create the same looking teams as what we have because it's very hard to come up with eight new color combination trios when you have 32 of them but next we go to rapid city south dakota for the vipers they got this nice bright green with a black and or a white and black obviously a little bit more of a basic look the green is mostly what the team's about i know what you're thinking jets different than the jets different colored green brighter i want them to have like a bright grass green uh the white and black i do like it was perfect for this so it has like the viper look on the side so you get the little little curvy things which makes it look fun uh up in south dakota you definitely can see where i'm going with this next we go to idaho falls idaho with the lizards orange silver and black very very fun looking uniform with like the splotch splotches on it uh, a team that sitting in idaho sitting in a we in again one of the big empty areas of the map just trying to fill it out trying to make it we're not going overseas we're not that can be something different but this 
I think is really nice. The, the orange with the silver and black. Very fitting of like a lizard's team. If you think of it like lizards with the splotches on their back, I think it fits. Next we have the Normand Oklahoma Twisters. Navy, black, and yellow. You got the navy. You got the black, which like accents into the navy, so you can kind of see it, but really shows up in the yellow. Uh, the Twisters, obviously, Oklahoma is known for being in Tornado Valley and tornadoes and all that. The, I think Oklahoma is one of the smartest places to put a football team because look at how passionate Oklahoma fans are, the university. If they got an NFL team, oh, that stadium would be packed. That Those, those fans would be hardcore. You get a good owner there, oh, they would go nuts. Oh, and I can just tell you, the Cowboy Twisters games would be insane for the fans. Those tickets would be so good money-wise. And obviously, you got to think money. I know people are like, oh, you're just thinking the money. It's the NFL, man. They got to make money. But I definitely like the navy blue, black, and yellow. The yellow definitely pops on the navy blue. You could also take the yellow and put it on the helmets. And maybe take navy blue on the pants. And Oh, they would look fantastic. Now let's jump out to Cedar Rapids, Iowa for the Wild Hogs. Uh, red, yellow, and black. Definitely a brighter uniform. Wild Hogs. Obviously, you're not just going to do another brown. I think the the red and yellow really give them this bright aesthetic, the wild hogs. You could do really good like a yellow helmet. It would look great. Again, you're like another yellow helmet, yes, but here's the difference. This team has a bunch of red on them and they're bright colors. That's why you use the black as accents, kind of dark in the, the uniforms. You put white in there and they're just going to be too bright. They're going to get annoying. Add a little bit of black, kind of give them that personality. Pushing right there, right in the middle of where every other team is in the NFL. You kind of add in the another team there. Now we go to Wichita, Kansas for the Wizards. Purple, black, and white. Dark purple. You, I know what you're thinking. Another purple team. Minnesota Vikings. Here's the difference. They will look completely different. I can guarantee that looking at these uniforms. These are just obviously mock-ups. The purple looks amazing with the black and the white. The Wizards coming out of Kansas, kind of a Wizard of Oz thing, I know. Wizard of Oz, yes, that looks, I think it's fantastic for them having the Wizards kind of being, again, in the middle of the map. I think they'd be a fun team. One of the harder teams to sell, this one and the next one we talk about, I think are going to be a little bit harder sells because they're not areas that are football heavy. You think like the Kansas Jayhawks, Kansas State, like, they're not the biggest schools. They're not the biggest destination. But I think if we could get these NFL teams there, it kind of makes people, all right, what if we go there? That's my team. You build. I think these could build up silent dark horses for some of the biggest franchises for fan-wise, biggest supported fans. The next one is in Omaha, Nebraska, the White Tails. You got that green, black, and yellow, the dark green, yellow accents with the black, the little gradient, which looks really nice. Again, Nebraska, not known for being big on football anymore. I know talking from family members and stuff that were around years ago, Nebraska fans could be some big fans. And I think if you give them this NFL team, all of a sudden you are building NFL in Nebraska. Fun looking uniforms. I think it would be really fun. You can also have a good alternate with like the yellow with the black and the green. Oh, it would look really good. And finally, in Little Rock, Arkansas, the Mockingbirds. Yellow, black, and purple. I know I've been doing a lot of yellow. Yellow is not a big color in the NFL. Well, it's not a little bit of yellow, but they have this bright yellow with the black and the purple. Got like the, the wings on the shoulder pads, which look really good. Especially if you could take the pants yellow and put like a lot of purple in them so it kind of darkens it up. I think it would look really good. So yeah, those are our four teams. Uh seen you guys have been watching up here you've been able to see them right here here's all of them they look fantastic in my opinion i love how all these look uh yeah these are the f eight new teams that we bring into the league so next let's talk about the expansion draft rules so for protection we are allowing teams to protect 20 players you have a 56 man roster you can protect your top 20 players but not just top 20 players 
you have to pick positions. So, I know what you're saying. A lot of expansion drafts are basically you pick your top this amount of players and then the rest are up. So you have to choose the positions you care about keeping players more. I feel like you can't really do that for the NFL. Because so, for a team, it's tough. I, I'm still deciding this literally on the spot. You can eat, mm, maybe we should. You know what? Yeah, we're gonna make, the, I was going to do 20 players, 10 offense, 10 defense, and you were gonna just do positions. After thinking about it, let the teams pick. Who do they want to protect? You get 10 offensive players and 10 defensive players on your 56-man roster. Any 10. You could pick quarterbacks. You could pick running backs, wide receivers, O-line for your offense, tight ends, fullbacks if you think you need to keep them, defensively, linebackers, D-linemen, corners, safeties. Who do you think deserves the protection? Which players do you not want a chance at losing? And there could be teams that decide... Well, their money's too much. We're not protecting them. And then suddenly you have a huge time player going to a new team, and that could really shake things up. So, once the expansion draft comes, we will do a snake draft. Hold on, I just want to write this in here. So, what a snake draft is, is every team will get to go. It'll be a random draw on which teams get first through later. Right? Once the order is picked, that's who goes one through eight. The team that gets eight, let's say the Mockingbirds, Little Rock, gets the eighth draft pick in the first round, they get the first pick of the second round. So it snakes back and forth. Not making it so a team picks, gets lucky on a random draw, and just gets to keep picking some of the best players and we let one of the teams get better. You're picking the first of the first round, you're last in the second, but first in the third again. So then teams start going into ooh, ee, ooh, ah. Like the Mockingbirds would have a really great draft pick. You don't get the top seven players that aren't protected. But you do get the eighth and the ninth. It puts you in a really, really nice spot. But then again, you pick the eighth and ninth. You don't get to pick again till the, the end of the third round. There is so many players that will go before they get to pick again. So for the expansion draft, it'll be 40 rounds long. I know what you're thinking. One, why is your face brighter? I finally turned my light on. I'm an idiot. I'm sorry. But this 40 round draft would be, I think, good to not fill the teams. You are not trying to dig every team into a hole. I know what you're thinking. What if you did 32 rounds? You pick one player from every team. Sure. But with how many players are on an NFL roster, I don't think it works well. For like an NHL team, I feel like you could because you have to fill up an NHL and an AHL team. You don't really have to do much for the AHL team. That's just for extra players. So I feel like, yeah. But for the NFL, you have to have a 52-man roster. You know what? Again, just sitting here. It's a, this is all fun thought experiment. I'm literally half the time coming up with it on the fly. We're doing that. Because that way, you're not literally draining one team out of all their roster. 32 rounds, one pick per team. So guess what? You better pick the player you want off that team. You won't get another chance. So some teams might get hit quick. The, I guarantee the Bills, one of the teams with some of the best depth on their roster, the Eagles, are going to be hit early. Their picks, their players are probably going to be gone in the first two, three rounds. And, and the big thing about this expansion draft, what it's going to do is make sure that you're not just off, put a bunch of college kids that just came out of college onto NFL rosters and then slowly build them now. You're nerfing the other team slightly. But because they can keep those top 20 players, the top 10 on offense, top 10 on defense, those teams can still perform. They still have chances to perform really well. But it makes sure that there's enough players to go around to all the other teams. Every team is going to have 32 players taken off their rock. No. 
eight players taken off their roster. Eight players. That's it. That's all they're going to lose. They're not losing half their roster. They're going to lose eight players. So it's not going to hinder them that much. It's just going to mean, hey, you lose a little bit of your depth. Guess you better go figure it out and build up your depth again. Now, I've come up with some players. I've looked at all the rosters that I think would benefit from this because they would probably be some of the players taken in the draft th that would probably be good pieces on these teams. You have like Naeem Hines, great running back, could get a starting job. Teddy Bridgewater could find another starting job. Andrew Van Ginkle is being lost on the Dolphins. He could be a starting linebacker. Cooper Rush proved he's a pretty good player. I have a feeling he could jumpstart his career again for a couple years as just that, hey, I'm holding down the starting spot till you find that guy, quarterback. Kenny Galladay's wide receiver. Tyler Huntley, man. He's been playing pretty well for the Ravens. He could have a starting job. Malik Reed for linebacker. AJ Dillon, man. AJ Dillon would be, it'd be amazing. These two running back systems would be hurt, yes. Green Bay with their two amazing running backs. But AJ Dillon would finally get that chance to be that guy for a team. That number one. That big power bulking back in there in the middle. Pounding down yards for a team that, again, these expansion teams are not going to be great. They're going to have 32 players that are already on NFL rosters. They're going to have to fill the rest of their rosters with players that were not on teams last year, most likely. A lot of college players. A lot more than will make your roster. There's a good chance there's seventh round picks starting for teams, for expansion teams. But A.J. Dillon would finally get that start. Kareem Hunt could have a couple years being the guy for a team. Again, breaking up a two running back system, Cleveland's probably going to keep Chubb. They could let Kareem Hunt go to get some other players. And Kareem Hunt, if he, again, if they let these players go, jumpstart his career. Calvin Ridley. LaVisca Chenault Jr. from CU could re-energize his career. Eno Benjamin. Russell Gage. Sean Murphy bunting for corner, Chase Edmonds running back, J Jarek McKinnon, Bryce Callahan. All these players are players I went through all the teams and I said, that player could either jumpstart or re-energize their career just by being picked up by a team in the expansion draft. Right? And again, there's more. If you have your favorite team, leave it down in the comments for an extra comment. What other players from your team do you think could restart their career just by being drafted by one of these expansion teams. So now we're gonna talk about division realignment. So I'm just gonna put it up here. The new map. Red is AFC, blue is NFC. And you guys gotta watch it as I talk. AFC one, Seattle, Idaho, North Dakota, South Dakota, Denver. Whew, that's gonna be an interesting one. You have Seattle and Denver, who Seattle, Got Denver Russell Wilson, yeah, but fleeced them on that by giving him a quarterback who's a diva, not not a top player anymore. Maybe can, maybe if they could get like a Sean Payton's coach. But man, having those two playing each other twice a year, those games might get intense. Then you add in Idaho, South Dakota, North Dakota, N -n -n North Dakota. Again, the North Dakota South Dakota rivalry being like, hey. It's, a, it's the Dakotas game. One game's in North, one game's in South. It's still fun. Because he's... Oh. And then Idaho being in there, kind of filling up the top of this map. Giving these states up here more of like a, a presence in the NFL. Number two. And this is the only AFC division that has all the same teams that were already in the league. San Francisco, Las Vegas, Los Angeles Chargers, Los Angeles Rams... And Arizona. Man, the stories you could build from this. San Fran, the Rams, and Arizona. Three teams that have played each other for years. They know how each other plays. Las Vegas and the Chargers, rivals. Playing from the old AFC West battling. And then you mix in, ah, now, not only do you have to play, like Arizona, my favorite team. Not only do you have to play two teams four times a year that you've already played. You don't have to play the Chargers and the Raiders, who you're not used to playing, twice a year. 
And again, with five team divisions, it makes it a lot bigger to see the difference between the top and the bottom teams. AFC 3. I've just numbered these 1 through 4 for each AFC and NFC because, hey, you can come up with fun names later. I'm not a name guy. You have Nebraska, Iowa, Kansas, Oklahoma, and Kansas City. I know what you're going to say. This one's going to make people nuts. Why am I putting probably the de facto face of the league, the top team of the league, in a division with four other teams? One. As you can tell, I'm trying to keep most of the divisions together. They're all close by. Your division game shouldn't be giant travel times. Your out of division games and your out of conference games, those should be the big travelers. So like teams like the New England Patriots or heck, the Denver Broncos are also in a division with KC who's all the way away from the Chargers Raiders. Seattle's all the way up here, going all the way down here. The Houston Texans, this one was good. Like, there was a lot of movement from these teams. Like, Miami, why are they in a division down here when their other teams are way up here? Why not just here? But this one is going to be the most much must-watch games because it's watching your top team then guaranteed dominate that division and then it's which expansion team will be the first to climb the mountain to take down Kansas City. I was thinking about leaving Denver in there, but obviously the distance Denver is in Seattle's in the most weird spot. I wanted the Dakota, so it's just worked out that way. And then AFC four. Dallas, Houston, New Orleans, Tennessee, Arkansas. Four NFL teams one expansion team, Arkansas, definitely will look like the de facto bottom of that division. But then you also have Houston and New Orleans, two of the bottom teams in the league. Tennessee needs a rebuild. So the Cowboys would look like an easy shoe-in. They're, they're in the AFC all of a sudden, and now they're, hey, <laughs> we're now the top of our division de facto. Everyone's going to look at them at the top of the division, but could one of these teams take them down? King Henry who's really good, but could he climb the mountain? Saints or Houston? Can Arkansas pull out a wild one? Because none of these teams are powerhouses by any mean. Could they pull out the wild one and win that division? In the NFC, we have NFC 1, Minnesota, Green Bay, Chicago, Indianapolis, and Detroit. You've got the NFC North teams. Green Bay, Minnesota, Chicago, Detroit. All know each other, all play each other already. They understand what they're going through. They get it. They all know what they're getting from this. And then you add Indy into that just to kind of start throwing a wrench in all their plans. Ah, we got to beat Detroit to get into the playoffs? Nah, you got to beat Detroit. Make sure Indy, it just, that division kind of just spices up a little bit. But it's one of the few that for older fans, hey, you remember this. And we're giving it to you. Just with a little bit of spice. NFC 2. Buffalo. The New York Jets. The New York Giants. New England. And Philadelphia. The division up here in the far east. And again. It's a bunch of teams put together. The Giants and Jets who play in the same stadium. I mean there's four games in that stadium. Or two games in that stadium played by both teams like they play twice in the same stadium i have a feeling again that rivalry will build giants and jets fan are always like we're better we're better not that'll build kind of like la chargers la rams that rivalry will build then you have the eagles in there and the bills knowing what we know nowadays those two in a division would be a that would be the battle the battle and the fact that both of them couldn't get in the playoffs to play each other in the Super Bowl. They have to beat each other in division and then maybe in the playoffs just to get to the Super Bowl. Oh my God, it'd be good. Next division, NFC 3, we have Cleveland, Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, Baltimore, Washington. Again, Baltimore, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Cincinnati, that division 
now just with the commanders in it. Again, a the NFC is definitely going to be more for older NFL fans. Here's something you guys know that we just spiced up a little bit more and gave back to you to add more fun. And that division would still be a brawl. Now with Washington in there being like a, are we good, aren't we good, a eh, eh, team. Kind of like Pittsburgh at times. With the big boys, Cincinnati, Baltimore. Whew, that would be a good one. The NFC will be the de facto better de league, or better conference to start with, but not forever. And then NFC for Carolina, Atlanta. Jacksonville, Miami, Tampa Bay. So you put the four Florida teams in with Carolina and Atlanta. I think that'd be a fun one. If you look at these teams, this would probably be one of the weakest NFC divisions off the bat. Because you have Carolina, who hasn't been good. Atlanta, who hasn't been good. Miami, who's great. Jacksonville, who's getting there. And Tampa Bay, who's crumbling. I don't know. That one would be one of the weirder ones. But yeah, this is the four divi the hmm. eight divisions. I can't count. If you can't tell, I'm not really good at speaking long term. The eight divisions we have. And man, I think we could get a lot of fun stories out of this. And again, the first year, yeah. Maybe you're just guaranteed to have a NFC-dominated win. Or maybe... The AFC pulls out something wild. You never know. And next thing we're talking about the draft, and think about that first draft. You're a first round pick for I don't for any of the expansion teams who are going to auto get. I know it's wild, but this is the best way to do it. They get picks five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. 5 through 12. They don't get the top 5 picks unless they trade for them with what they get in the expansion draft. They get their... They just... They have 7 picks. Whichever team picked number 8 in the expansion draft gets 5 in the actual draft. So then you get that consolation prize. There's 4 teams who get players above you, but you get the 5th best player in the draft and that player then comes into a brand new team. And gets to be their their guy. You get 40 picks per round. Which, again, means that the draft will be longer. I still think we'll do... It's th still three days. The first round gets one day. The second and third a day. Four through seven get the third day. And again, we are now jumping to 280 total picks. There used to be 32 rounds in 224. There's 56 extra players drafted into the league. That's a full team. That's like another whole team of players gets drafted every year. Mr. Irrelevant, who used to be 224. Nah, that's not even a seventh round pick anymore. That's a six. That's a five. You're now a fifth rounder. Mr. Relevance, 280. You can now just put number 280 on a jersey. It'll be something much different. And I think it'd be really fun. The schedule will change. So, we are now going to 21 weeks. I know what you're thinking. What? NFL players already have trouble staying healthy for 17 games. Now you're having to play 21 weeks. Ah, 20 games in 21 weeks. They still get a buy. Why not two buys? Because we're not trying to extend this lead, this this thing to play all year round. And we are already extending everything three weeks earlier. Basically, what you do is you take the, you go based off when the Super Bowl is. You keep the Super Bowl happening the beginning of February. Then you just work back from there and you add three weeks on to the end. You go, where did we start this year? We Right, they started preseason in early August. We're going to have July preseason games, guys. Right, let me just jump over to ESPN real quick. The preseason, the Hall of Fame game, was played 
on August 4th. So if you go back and look, August 4th, so you go, okay, one, two, three. So basically the Hall of Fame game would now be played. Whoa, hold on. Would now be played on the 14th of July, halfway through July. That's usually when camps start, like a month before the games, on like the 7th. We're having June training camps now. Meaning that they start training camps in the summer. You still keep the draft in April. They basically have a month with nothing football NFL related really happening until June. And you get, hey, people coming back for camps. It makes it more of a commitment for NFL players. That should be fine with them. They're getting paid enough money to work three extra weeks in a year. They still get... After the, the, like the Super Bowl team, after you win the Super Bowl, you still got months of not having to play games or practice or nothing. Right? Until OTAs and stuff in like June, maybe even late May. I don't even know how early they start that. Yeah, with 20 games now, that means that we're going back to an even number, which means teams for 500 would have to go 10 and 10. Meaning, a lot more often, you're going to have teams. Double digits is going to be normal. You're going to have teams looking for 15, 16, 17 wins for top teams in the league. It's going to be insane. The Super Bowl still in February. We still have we, three weeks early, and we're having four preseason games. Now, guys, I know this has been like a half an hour video, but that's how Durham would. That is how Durham would create an NFL expansion. Tell me down below what you guys think. Did you guys enjoy it? And if you did, tell me what you guys would do different. I will see you guys in a month for the next How Durham's Wood. Boopa, boopa, boopa.